Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to SJ Woodworks. I'm Steve and it's been a long time. It's been a couple of months since I made a video. It's actually been a couple of months since I turned anything on the lathe. So this is kind of my comeback video here and uh, here we are in the new shop. Um, if you didn't catch my last video, uh, I moved recently to a new house and it's old the old house and that meant moving all the shop equipment here to a new garage. So here I am in a new garage and it's uh, pretty much set up now. Um, I've gotten a few new tools and uh, a few new arrangements to get used to. Definitely still looking for some of my tools when I, they're not where they used to be. But, um, but here we are and we're going to turn something on the lathe today, something I haven't done in a while. So hopefully we'll be able to get right back into making videos again and putting them up on YouTube for you guys. And, um, and I hope you enjoy it. After we're done making something here, I think we'll uh, do a quick shop tour so you can see I've got things set up and maybe offer any suggestions for arrangements of tools or whatever if you have any. But I think for now, just to get going, I'll just grab a hunk of anything that I found over in the closet and um, we'll make something out of this. Okay, so I've just cut the corners off on the bandsaw and made it round. Now we're just going to true it up here using the square carbide cutter goes pretty quick so let's start cutting a tenon here to fit the jaws of my chuck uh, and then I'll use the cutter just to make it slight dovetail by just turning a little on its side and we'll just start shaping the bottom of the bowl at this point I'm not sure exactly what the shape is going to be but it kind of just comes out a nice uh, rounded almost a hollow form shape with a, a wide opening at the top as I go around, but I'll smooth the outside with the square carbide cutter, which is pretty good for outside curves. And uh, just move the tool rest around to get to the bottom. Smooth it all out. Looks like there's a little crack there that um, I'll put some CA glue in that later to make sure that piece doesn't come off. Um, now I'm using a cupped carbide tool to get a final cut on. You can see the fine shavings that are coming off and uh, I'll do some shear scraping with this as well to just get the final good finish cut on this to not require a whole lot of sanding. This is the Hunter Osprey tool actually. And I'll do a little sanding. I won't make you watch the whole sanding process. We all know that's boring. Now we've turned it around in the chuck and we'll start the hollowing process. Uh, using the round carbide cutter and I, I'm going to get into this hollowing quite a bit until I realize that it's not going to be very easy to kind of back hollow the sides there. I don't have a swan neck hollowing tool here. I'm only using a straight one and looking at this I'm going to have a hard time getting all the way back there because uh, I just can't see. So trying something new. I've turned the lathe speed to reverse and I'm going to hollow this backwards. So you can see I'm, I'm on the wrong side of the bowl now and uh, the advantage here is now I can see what I'm doing using only a straight bar. Um, and another option of course would be to stand on the back side of the lathe and leave it running forwards if you don't have a reverse on your lathe. But because my lathe has reverse, I'll throw it in reverse. I'm probably running at about uh, 1800 RPMs here to, uh, to haul this out. It's not a big bowl and uh, it's not shaking or vibrating at all. So. This is working pretty well actually to run backwards. I've never done this before, so it's a little disconcerting to try and convince yourself to run backwards. Now a cupped carbide tool again for a finish cut and shear scrape up the side. Being careful not to get a catch with these cupped carbide cutters. If you hit them in there straight, you'll get a catch that will, uh, will scare you to death and, and burst your bowl off. Uh, now a little sanding on the inside. It's harder to sand because my, my hand doesn't fit in there, just a few fingers. This inside is not sanded as well as the outside. Now I've turned it around to take the foot off uh, using the detailed tool from Easy Wood Tools to take the foot off. This is actually just chucked with the regular jaws of the chuck expanded inside the opening of the bowl. Uh, it doesn't fit on the cold jaws. The opening is too small for that. So I've just used the regular one. I put a piece of shelf liner in there to keep it from being scratched up by the jaws of the chuck. I'm undercutting a little bit to try to make sure it sits flat. And this little foot, I'll talk about why this foot is there. Um, Okay, well we had some good times with this little bowl. Um, I don't know what the wood is here, it's just something I got kind of in a box of blocks uh, from Craft Supplies. But uh, I think it came out pretty good, I kind of like the shape. To be honest, uh, I, I have a little foot on here. I actually originally did not want to have a little foot on the bottom of this bowl. I wanted to just be uh, rounded off and nice and, you know, get this shape all the way to the bottom. But what happened is I believe that I hollowed a little too deep and so if I hadn't put a little thin foot on the bottom here then I think we would have broken through. So I ended up adding the foot um, to avoid that. 
I finished it with just a, a simple coat of walnut oil and um, I, I kind of like the sort of satin sheen that you get from just just plain walnut oil on here. So um, I think that looks pretty good. And uh, we had a couple of adventures. You saw we did the hollowing with the lathe in reverse. Um, I do not have a high speed steel gouge that would have let me go far that far under. So of course we used our carbide tools, the round carbide cutter to hollow this out. And uh, we went reverse because it was easier to go in this direction than try and get it all the way around and go that direction where it would have been harder to see. Um, another option if you don't have reverse is just go stand on the other side of the lathe and that's what a lot of people would have done. But because my lathe does have a reverse function, um, I popped in reverse and it worked pretty well. That was actually the first time I've ever done that so that was a little bit adventurous. And then uh, this opening was too small for my coal jaws to expand inside so we had to just use the regular jaws on the chuck. Uh, I didn't want to mar the sanded finish here, of course, so a big padding of uh, shelf liner for that. So a, a lot of things that um, were kind of interesting on this on this bowl, but I really like it, and I think um, you know it could be easily used for a, a candy dish or or something like that. So thanks for joining me. Uh, I was going to do a shop tour also with the new garage here, but I think I'm going to pass on that this time. This video I think is too long. So I will do a shop tour separately and upload that as a separate video for anybody who's interested. Um, otherwise, please like and subscribe, and I uh, appreciate all the subscriptions that we have. And go ahead and share this video, share my channel with your friends, and let's pass it around. Let's keep this going. I'm glad to be back, and I hope you guys stick with me. Thanks. See you next time.